Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Not again, ladies and gentlemen, not again. It seems that the shipping container crisis could spark another toilet paper shortage. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think it goes deeper than just toilet paper. However, this is about a 30 second article that I'm gonna read for you right here and then I'm gonna carry on. And you know, something that I have to say about if there is another toilet paper shortage is that I hope that most of us or most people that were not prepared around this time last year during the toilet paper shortage that happened initially, maybe hopefully they learned their lesson and they have toilet paper and that won't be an issue. Being that there is a toilet paper shortage prediction, what other things are there going to be in shortage? Because the reason that there is predictably a toilet paper shortage is because of this container crisis that we have. I'm pretty sure that most other things travel via container ships as well. The world's largest producer of pulp needed to make toilet paper is now warning that the demand for shipping containers could delay shipments to producers. As the container crisis continues, the Brazil-based company is finding it harder to secure shipping containers to transport the wood pulp. If the issue worsens, a worldwide toilet paper shortage could be inevitable. The company has already had to push back shipments that were scheduled for March into April. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when I take a look at these articles and I see that they're all concentrating on toilet paper, I ask myself, why is everyone talking about toilet paper? Why aren't they talking about all of the other things that could be short due to this container crisis. And that's what I like to look at. So as you can see here, another article, shipping container crisis could spark another toilet paper shortage. Now this is the article that I wanna concentrate on. This is the one that I think that we should be looking at instead of just concentrating on a toilet paper shortage. And it says here, I've never seen anything like this Chaos strikes global shipping. Now you see, ladies and gentlemen, that makes a little more sense to me. Because global shipping is not just about toilet paper. And of course, we all know what happened with that big container ship getting stuck in the canal. And I do believe that it's about 12% of all of the products that are shipped worldwide that travel through this canal. So depending on how long it takes for them to get that ship wedged out of there, and it looks like it's pretty firmly wedged in there. I mean, this thing is massive. I guess would depend on how long it would take for them to recoup that time that they lost in trying to get this thing out of there. The health crisis has disrupted, the health crisis disrupted international trade driving up the cost of shipping goods and adding a fresh challenge to the global economic recovery. I'm not sure what recovery they are talking about, but let's read on here for a little bit. Off of the coast of Los Angeles, more than two dozen container ships filled with exercise bikes, electronics, and other highly sought imports have been idling for as long as two weeks. In Kansas City, now, ladies and gentlemen, remember every time I tell you that whenever you purchase something, you should purchase something with your hard-earned dollars that will bring value to your life? Now, look at the things that we are importing. Exercise bikes, electronics, and other highly sought imports that don't really bring too much value to us. And I'm just wondering if later on in this article it states what we actually export we're consuming all of these things from other nations that maybe don't bring that much value to our nation's life, right? But what are we exporting? In Kansas City, farmers are struggling to ship soybeans to buyers in Asia. There you go. We're exporting food. <laughs> in China, furniture destined to North America piles up on factory floors. And there you go. They are exporting stuff to us that pretty much just serves one function of sitting there so that you can sit on it. Whereas we are exporting actual things that keep people alive, food. 
Ask yourselves, if there was a big crisis where you didn't know where you were going to get your furniture from, would you suffer that much? If all of a sudden you heard, oh my goodness, we're not going to be able to get sofas or love seats anymore for the next year, would you be panicked? No. But if you heard, oh my goodness, we're not going to be able to get corn to feed our animals. We're not going to be able to get corn to put in cans to feed people to make this or make that. Would you panic a little bit and maybe go out and get something? Well, if you're already prepared, you won't panic because that's one of the reasons we prepare is so that we can make logical decisions during times of stress and during times in which we cannot control the outcome of the situation like shortages. However, I think I've made my point that what we are importing as a nation brings less value to our nation compared to the things that we are exporting. Around the planet, the health crisis has disrupted trade to an extraordinary degree, driving up the cost of shipping goods and adding a fresh challenge to the global economic recovery. This health crisis has thrown off the choreography of moving cargo from one continent to the other. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is why I am such a big advocate of being prepared because these are things that are happening now that we on an individual basis cannot control. And that is what prepping is all about, to be able to have some control over the things that you cannot control. And that maybe sounds like an oxymoron, but let me explain. If you have food, if you have toilet paper, you have control over those things because you already own them. You already have possession of those things and you cannot control whether there is some kind of a shortage in the system. So that control that you don't have because the system is broken, you gain if you are prepared with those things that are now not available. At the center of the storm is the shipping container, the workhorse of globalization. Americans stuck in their homes have set off a surge of orders from factories in China, much of it carried across the Pacific in containers. The metal boxes that move goods and towering stacks atop enormous vessels as households in the United States have filled bedrooms with office furniture and basements with treadmills. The demand for shipping has outstripped the availability of containers in Asia, yielding shortages there just as the boxes pile up at American ports. Ladies and gentlemen, we really need to have a change of heart in the United States of America. We really need to educate the public as to what those things are that bring value to our lives. I mean, reading this, I see it not only in this article, but I see it everywhere. Heck, I see it in my own home. I have a lot of these items that they're talking about here. However, I've learned to prioritize to spend my hard earned dollars on those things that bring value to my life first before I go ahead and splurge on those side items that if there were a major crisis would do me or my family no good whatsoever. Containers that carry millions of masks to countries in Africa and South America early in this health crisis remain there, empty and uncollected because shipping carriers have concentrated their vessels on their most popular routes, those linking North America and Europe to Asia. And at ports where ships do call, bearing goods to unload, they are frequently stuck for days in floating traffic jams. This health crisis and its restrictions have limited the availability of dock workers and truck drivers, causing delays in handling cargo from Southern California to Singapore. Every container that cannot be unloaded in one place is a container that cannot be loaded somewhere else. And that, ladies and gentlemen, just goes to show how deep in trouble we are as a manufacturing country meaning that we don't manufacture. I read an article, I'm not sure if it's in this article or not, but I read an article that stated that for every four containers that we receive full, we only send back one container that's full and three empties. So this is a big problem for our nation. I believe that until we become a manufacturing power once again, like we used to be, that we will continue to have problems and be at the behest of those that produce. Think about it. If you can't make something, but you really need that something, you are at the behest of the person that has that something you need. 
So if we are not manufacturing for ourselves, we are at the behest of those that can manufacture the products that we need. I've never seen anything like this. All the links in the supply chain are stretched. The ships, the trucks, the warehouses. Economies around the globe are absorbing the ripple effects of the disruption on the seas. Higher costs for transporting American grain and soybean across the Pacific threaten to increase food prices in Asia. Empty containers are piled up at ports in Australia and New Zealand. Containers are scarce at India's port, forcing makers of electronic parts to truck their wares more than 1,000 miles west to the port of Mumbai, where the supply is better. Rice exporters in Thailand, Vietnam, and Cambodia are foregoing some shipments to North America because of the impossibility of securing containers. The chaos on the seas has proved a bonanza for shipping companies like Marsk, which in February cited record high freight prices and reporting more than $2.7 billion in pre-tax earnings in the last three months of 2020. So it seems that the shipping container companies are making a lot of money off of this. Ending it off here, ladies and gentlemen, it says that no one knows how long the upheaval will last. Though some experts assume containers will remain scarce through the end of the year, as the factories that make them, nearly all of them in China, scramble to catch up with demand. And this is the part, ladies and gentlemen, that we have to pay attention to. All right, these experts are assuming that this shortage will last through the end of the year. So what does that mean to you and me? It means that we need to make sure that we stock up on those things that are not made here in the United States, which is almost everything. You know, I get a lot of hassle. Well, not a lot, but I always get a few comments here and there. Whenever I do a review of a product that was not manufactured here in the United States. But what do we produce here in the United States, ladies and gentlemen? Leave in the comments what we actually produce here, because I would really like to know all of the things that we produce here. Do we produce washing machines? Do we produce clothes dryers? refrigerators. I found, I actually found a company that makes flashlights that are made here in the United States. I forget their name, but I passed by. I passed them by. Why? Because the product that they made was two to three times more expensive than what you can purchase from a foreign producer that has an American-based company, but the quality was about one half to one third. For example, I remember seeing a flashlight that was probably like $160 they had like 500 lumen. Now, I'm sure it's a really nice flashlight for a 500 lumen flashlight, but ask yourselves, would you pay $160 for a flashlight that provides you with 500 lumen, or would you rather just go and get a cheaper flashlight for $15 that provides you the same amount of lumen? Because a flashlight in the end is a flashlight. Now, I understand. I think that the right thing to do is to support our countrymen in purchasing products that are made here in the United States. However, we all have our limitations on how much we can spend on what. That's my question. If, if you know of any major products that are made here in the United States, please leave it in the comments. That'd be very interesting to read through that. I mean, I just heard here a few days ago that Ford Motor Company is now taking one of its plants to Mexico. Any hitch means delay and extra cost for someone. This health crisis has disrupted every part of the journey. Everybody wants everything and the infrastructure cannot keep up. It looks like this health crisis is going to continue to affect us in ways that we really haven't thought about or really seen in the past. I mean, I know that we've been through health crises before, but studying history, I haven't seen it be like this, where it affected the entire world as far as shipping and receiving and production and things like that. And that's probably because we are more of a globalized world now, meaning that the world got smaller. So I'll end it with this. Make sure that you're prepared. If for some reason you're still here at this part of the video and you are new to this channel and you're not prepping or you're considering getting prepared, make sure that you are getting prepared with those things that you need, those things that you know you're going to use. It is the same message that I've been touting for years. 
Because what's happening now, ladies and gentlemen, will happen again. And who knows how long this crisis will last. Having said that, thank you very much for joining in. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper. I am out.